Hello photographers, my name is Spiro Seniatis and this is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And it's Thursday, which means we're doing a Q&A. We got a bunch of questions again, so we're going to jump right into it. Starting with a question from Neroy Saki, who says, I don't have enough money for a full frame camera and he wants to know which is better, the Canon 60D or the Canon 600D and the 600D is also known in the United States as the Canon T3i. Between the 60 and the 600D, those cameras are actually very similar in terms of image quality. In fact, they use the exact same imaging sensor. The main difference between the two cameras is that the 60D has a more professional control layout, which means you have two control dials. It's also a weather sealed camera and it has a better auto focusing system than the Canon T3i does. So between the two, I personally feel that the 60D has better features, but in terms of image quality, these two cameras are basically equal and you'll get great results with either one of them. Our next question comes from Miss Money Matters who says, I have problems shooting at night. How would you set your settings in manual mode to get good nighttime shots. If you want to get good photos in low light, here's how you're going to set your settings to get the best results that you can possibly get. First of all, you're going to take your ISO setting and you're going to turn that thing up as high as you're comfortable turning it up. And that's going to vary from camera to camera and photographer to photographer. Some photographers don't like to go over ISO 800 because they don't like the noise. Other photographers are comfortable going all the way up to ISO 12,800 or even higher in order to get the shot. So that's entirely up to you, but whatever ISO you choose, you're going to take it as high as you can possibly take it. That's going to maximize the camera's ability to get the light that's in the scene. And then you're going to set the aperture for whatever lens you happen to be using to the widest open aperture. That'll be the smallest possible aperture number on the camera. Now, Miss Money Matters mentioned that she's using the 50 millimeter f1.8. So that means that if you're using that lens, you're going to set your aperture to f1.8. That's going to let as much light as possible into the lens for the camera to capture. And after you've set those two settings, you're going to set your shutter speed to get you a zero exposure. And hopefully that shutter speed will be 1 50th of a second or faster, allowing you to handhold the camera and get a sharp shot. Now, if that's not good enough, then you've reached the limitations of your camera. And there's a couple of things that you can do to deal with that. The first is use a tripod. If you put the camera on a tripod, then you don't have to worry about camera shake because the camera will be held steady by the tripod. Now if you don't have a tripod or you're shooting moving subjects and you want those subjects to be sharp, you're going to need to add light. Whether it's continuous light or a flash, the only other option will be to add light. All right, our next question comes from Rob Millward who says, I've been shooting spot metering mode and he shoots a lot of concert shots as well as bar and nightlife shots. And he wants to know if I think spot metering is better or or center weighted metering is better. In brief, spot metering means that the camera meters and evaluates the exposure only on a very tiny spot in the whole scene, where center weighted looks at the center and the rest of the scene, but gives the center priority in the exposure calculation. Now, if you're shooting concert shots, in my opinion, I would definitely use spot metering because in concerts, usually what you have is a very dark area around the performer with very bright light shining on the performer. And that very dark area will confuse the camera, which will lead to an exposure that will make the performer being very bright and very overexposed. But if you expose using spot metering on the performer, the camera's gonna ignore that dark background and give you an exposure reading for the performer only, allowing you to deal with that bright light that's shining on them. Now the bar situation could vary depending upon the lighting in the environment. Center weighted could help you in a bar situation if you're dealing with lighting that's a little bit varied but not quite so varied as it tends to be in a concert situation because if you have people but you also want to capture some of that environment around them that center weighted metering will help you bring the environment into the exposure equation without losing total focus on making sure that your main subject is actually well exposed our next question comes from gamer guy and this one's actually pretty easy. He wants to know if you can change the shutter speed when shooting in video mode on the Nikon D3200 
standard DSLR? And the answer to that is yes. You need to have the camera dial, the mode dial, set to manual mode. And then when you flip the camera into live view, you will have the ability to change the shutter speed. Now, one of the things about the D3200 in video mode is that in order to change the aperture, and I'm just gonna point this out because you might not know this, but changing the aperture is not as intuitive as it might seem. You can change the aperture in live view mode and you might see the number change, but the aperture won't actually change. What you need to do is exit live view mode, set your aperture where you want it to be, and then go back into live view mode. Our last question comes from Isaac Liu, who's looking at the D7100 and the D7000. And he says, what the heck, I might as well just spend the extra money on the D7100. And if you want to, that's fine. But if you're planning on buying some lenses, because he says he shoots mostly macro food and portrait, if you don't already have the really good quality lenses that you want, I would say buy the D7000 and use that extra money to buy a really nice macro lens or a really nice portrait portrait lens instead because those lenses will last you through all of your Nikon cameras for now basically until the ends of the earth but the camera body eventually will go out of date on you. It's always good to invest in good lenses. Alright guys that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed the Q&A and if you have questions you want me to answer let me know down in the comments. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video I want you to do me a favor and share it with your friends but the most important thing you should do is get out there and take some damn photos. I'll see you on Tuesday.